Nice you going boys, Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop. Nice studio I have here today, eh? Yeah, sitting in the lake room today. Uh, I am uh, have to apologize for not posting videos last week, but uh, Janet had her hip replacement surgery and uh, it's taken a lot of my time to tend to her and look after her and nurse her and try to get her back on her feet and get her, you know, out in the garden again. <laughs> but it's gonna take some time. So anyways, I had some videos made ahead of time but I didn't have time to edit them, so that's what I was doing off and on through the last week or so with Janet uh, convalescing here at the camp. So I have a video here about, guess what? Putting the drawer boxes together, or cutting out the drawer boxes for my workbench. So we're gonna have a look at, uh, at cutting out the materials and getting ready to assemble the drawer boxes on my workbench, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I've decided that the drawer height is going to be six inches. Uh, so the, that means the sides are going to be six inches. This piece that I have left over from when I made the vertical cabinets is only 11 inches wide. So in, in order to get enough pieces cut out of this, I'm going to have to overlap a couple of them here so that the, the piece will have a little notch in the corner. You'll see that when I cut it out. Uh, the other thing is, uh, when I measured my drawers, I took some careful measurements there to see what the drawer measurements would be. I need about uh, 50, 49 and a quarter inches of stock to make three fronts and then 49 and a quarter inches to make three backs. This piece here is only uh, 96 inches long and it's not 12 inches wide. So I had to do some uh, stick handling, <laughs> some creative cutting here in order to get six pieces out of this to make my drawer front. So what I've done is uh, I set my fence at six inches and I'm going to rip some of this to six inches. Uh, and then I'll flip it around and rip the other side to six inches. And then two of the fronts or two of the backs will have a little nick out of the corner. Uh, but I don't think that's gonna matter. Uh, that may sound complicated right now, but once I cut it out and start assembling it, you'll understand what's going on. So I need one piece uh, 16 inches long. I'm going to cut this a little bit longer than 16 because I'm going to be cutting this with the jigsaw and the jigsaw doesn't cut real straight. So I'll cut it a little bit longer than 16 and then I'll turn it back to 16. So this procedure of cutting, it's going to be the same for all of them. Okay, I'm, I'm getting ready to cut out the last two pieces and this one is getting uh, tricky because I want to maximize my plywood, right? Uh, my drawer sides are two are six inches high. So the last pieces that I need are 60, or 15 and 7 eighths inches long. So in order to make sure, because I'm cutting this rough, in order to make sure I have enough material to square up the piece, I'm going to cut it 16 and a quarter. So I made a mark here, 16 and a quarter. I made a mark here, 16 and a quarter, and I drew my line. So that's where I want to cut. But I can't just cut that right through to the six inch line because, uh, well, it just won't work. So what I have to do is from this point to this point, I have to half that, the, the material. So that, <laughs> that's almost hard to explain. Anyhow, uh, I think I know what I'm trying to do. So I measured in here five and a half inches, and in here five and a half inches. And then I'm going to draw my line here. Well, I already did it, but just showing you there again. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to cut along this line, and along this line, and then along this line. Wish me luck. <laughs> I don't need that piece anymore. When you're trying to save wood, you end up making some uh, complex cuts. 
I was going to call them complicated, but they're not really complicated. They're just, they're just straight cuts. They're just complex. And then we'll just finish this cut here. Now what we have to do is, we have to uh, reposition our clamps. Now I need to make a plunge cut and rip along this line here. Simple. What I end up with is these two pieces here. So these will be uh, either the front or the back and they just have a little notch in the edge. And if you don't tell anybody, I certainly won't. What I want to do is trim up this edge, make it a 90. Now these two pieces should be the same, and they are. Uh, this is the front and back for drawer three, and this one is going to have the notch cut out of the corner. So sue me. <laughs> these are the front and the backs for drawer one, and then these are the front and the backs for drawer number two. I need to cut some of the uh, plywood sheet here to make the sides for my drawers. Ready? The sides are going to be six inches high. So that's going to be like 18 inches, but then there's always waste from the blade. So I measured over 19 inches and then I'm going to cut it with my Makita saw. So the shoe is five and an eighth inches wide. So I measure back five and an eighth. And put a mark here and then I set up my straight edge. So now I'm ready to go. What I'm planning on doing is I'm going to cut this piece off. Then I can take this to the table saw and trim it down to the proper sizes that I need. this into three pieces and then cut them to length. So the first thing we're going to do is make a square cut on the end. Now these pieces have to be 24 inches long. Okay, so there's my six sides now. So I have enough pieces now to assemble the doors. So I need to get some sort of material for the bottoms of my drawers. So what I found was this piece, this old piece of mason like that I had kicking around. Now a lot of people are saying, Mike, whenever you need something, a piece of scrap or something, you always seem to come up with it. How can that be? <laughs> well, it just so happens, like I've said so many times before, I never ever throw anything out, or rarely do I throw things out. And this piece of masonite here is a good example of that. This masonite is, is heavy duty, thick, it's a quarter of an inch thick, it's heavy piece. and. Uh, just a little bit of history about this piece, uh, where I came by, how I came by it, and, and the life of it. You know, this piece, I'm going to say, it's close to 70 years old. You know, this piece is probably older than me, actually. Uh, my father was uh, the commanding officer of the Air Cadet Squadron in Stoddart, Nova Scotia, uh, the 374 Squadron. Many people probably recognize that name. It was voted best squadron in Canada one year, hey, and I was in that squadron at that time. But anyway, my father was the CEO, and in the uh, 
in the Air Cadet quarters, they had lots of different classes. One of the classes they had was navigation. So what they did was they, uh, the Air Force, of course, at that time would supply surplus material to the various Air Cadet squadrons to help them, uh, you know, indoctrinate them into what it would be like, say, in the Air Force, and some of the tools and equipment that the Air Force personnel used. Anyway, one of the things that Dad got from the Air Force was an old navigation table. Now, the navigation table, of course, Dad, when he was in the Air Force, was a navigator, so that was quite close to his heart, uh, navigating. But anyway, this navigation table, it was this was the top of it, so that's how big it was. It was made so that you could string out, or well, you could have a map on it, and then you could string out paper on top of it, so you could either trace your map or plot your course or whatever, and, and you know, rework it. Now, the reason that I know that it was a navigation table, well, first of all, my father told me that, but if you look at the edges on this piece of masonite, they're tapered, right? It's hard to see that there, but it's tapered right down to an edge. And that's meant because they had a roll of paper, a roll of maps down on this side, or this side, whatever, and they would just pull the map up on the tabletop. The tabletop is painted black, so there'd be no, it's flat black, so there'd be no glare or anything like that. But they just pull the paper on it here, or the map, and then they could lay here and plot. It's a nice smooth surface to write on, to, to lay out your your your, uh, your course, draw lines, things like that. So this side was tapered, and also this side is tapered, so that the map could roll on and roll off without tearing the map. So that's why I know this came from a navigation table. And like I say, it was probably around in the Second World War, but I have no proof of that, but it's at least 70 years old. And when, uh, when the squadron was kind of changing hands and relocating and moving from quarters to quarters, this uh, navigation table that they had became surplus, uh, surplus from the Air Force and then surplus from the Air Cadet Squadron. So Dad ended up with this navigation table at home and we used this for years and years doing projects on and building models and you name it, we did it on this. Uh, but anyways, I ended up getting that table when Dad sold his house and moved on. Uh, and. Uh, like I used the table, I think the legs, I still have the legs around on something, I forget what they're on. But I have the hardware from that table, I saved all that, I stripped the table apart and saved it all. And one of the things I saved was this tabletop, because it was a nice heavy duty masonite, and it, it was a big piece. So I thought, I'll use that for something somewhere. And that was probably in the 1980s when I acquired this piece. And I've been holding on to it ever since, and what is it now, 2024? So it's 44 years ago since I got it. And it was living for probably 44 years before that. So this is an old piece of wood. And here it is. Ready to be put to use in drawers in Grampy's workshop. How about that? What a life it's had, eh? If it could only talk. <laughs> so how do I get three drawer bottoms out of this one piece? This piece is 35 inches wide. And it measures 66 and a half inches long. So it's a big piece. And I don't want to waste it. Uh, so I want to get the most efficient cut out of it I can. So I'm thinking 17 inches, so two 17s is 34, so I could cut two lengths that way and cut them 24 inches wide, 24 inches wide. I still have a piece that's 24, 30, 22 inches wide. So I still have a good piece left in the end. Plus I'd only need to cut here, here and here, so I'd have this piece left up with there too. So I'd still have a good hunk of this left for future projects, right? So. <laughs> okay, so there's one, two, three drawer bottoms, and then I'll have this piece left over for some other project down the road. All right, uh, because this is just a rough cut, I'm gonna free cut it, I'm not gonna put the straight edge on, so let's have a go. Okay, there's the three pieces cut. Let's take them to the table saw now and square them up. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my apron on because this is kicking up a lot of fine dust. This is the side I just cut, so we'll flip the sheet around. 
Okay, so that's the width. Uh, now I need to set the length. Alright, so there's my sheet. Let's see how square it is. 28 and 8. 316. Hmm, not real square. Don't know what happened there. But you know what? Um, if it's not exactly fitting right, you can always trim it back a little. So we're going to go with that. 28 and 316. 28 and 316. So we've got two of them nice and square, and one of them pretty darn square. So there, uh, the material is all prepared now to start assembling the drawer boxes for the drawers on the workbench. So that's, that's, that's what will be coming up in the next episode. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. And just a quick update to a nanny. Uh, she had her hip replacement and she's back home here at the camp now. And uh, she's working on recovering, but it's, uh, it's not a, been an easy journey for her. I think as far as the hip goes, it's coming along well. But she, because of her other medical issues like uh, irritable bowel syndrome and her bladder concerns, uh, that's, you know, slowing us down a little bit on the recovery front. So anyways, we're working on that. We sure do appreciate all your kind thoughts and well wishes and especially your prayers. Thanks very, very much for that. So keep them coming and uh, stay tuned for the next episode because, like I say, we're going to be hopefully assembling the door boxes and installing them in the bench. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. Have a great week. Don't forget to thumbs up me. And we'll talk to you soon.